so the UC approach to doing that, uh, in, to specify security properties, which we also lend to, to modularity, is to do specification of properties uh, in a slightly indirect way. Instead of uh, listing the properties that you want, you're going to specify the properties that you want from, from, from your task, from your protocol, from your system, uh, uh, via uh, uh, an ideal service. Okay, so that's kind of maybe the step number one, which is maybe different than other uh, other things. And uh, uh, so, so, so the way you want to specify your, your security properties is that uh, you're going to, to write algorithmically uh, a, a service, which is the ideal service. This is what you would like your protocol, your system to look like. And, uh, and then you're going, and, 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 and then you're going to say that your system is secure if it looks like this ideal service. And the point with this ideal service uh, is that you don't really care how it's implemented, if it's uh, complex or not complex, or it's even realistic. The whole point of this, this ideal service is to, to see uh, um, uh, how it looks from the outside world. Right? So how the environment looks at it and, 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 and see its interaction with the environment of that service, right? Uh, and this is uh, all we care about in that service. That's the way we specify the security of, this, of, 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 of the system is, by the way, it looks to the outside, okay? So, uh, and, and, that's, uh, uh, and that's, the, that's the important point about this service, right? So, uh, um, so, so, in, so if you want to, to capture the desired security of the system, let's call it P, so what we're gonna do, we're going to, again, write an ideal system, which we call F, functionality that captures the desired effect of, the, of uh, what, we, what we're going to do on the, uh, on the external system. And then we're going to say that the system P is secure uh, for F if it looks the same as F to any external environment. That's kind of the high level, okay? Uh, and then all the security properties that we want are kind of, kind of going to encode it and put it into this F, right? And we're going to have to put there the, the correctness, the trace property, the secrecy, the timing, uh, everything that we said before is going to be incorporated in this F. And this kind of very algorithmic way of capturing security. So it's saying this, I want it to look like that. Um, uh, so that's, so, so that's, the, that's the, the first idea. Uh, so, uh, um, so, so as I said, the F doesn't need to be efficient or even realistic. And it's just like, I want to care about how it looks from the outside. Um, and um, okay, so that's, that, 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 that's the main idea. Um, and, uh, and, and let's look more closely at this, at this box, which is, this is the core of, of the definition. What does it mean for a system that it's, uh, 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 it says it's secure for F if it looks the same as F? So what does it mean for a system to look the same as F? Okay, from the outside. So we can try to, to formalize it. Uh, so, uh, so, so uh, okay, so before we do that, actually, the, uh, again, I want to kind of say, maybe kind of saying it too early, but maybe not. Um, so, so the good things about this, uh, specifying things this way, is that uh, it's, uh, you can, it's very natural to express any combination of those properties, right? So if you want to have the, uh, something that uh, uh, can, can, can do uh, either, uh, uh, um, either change some, 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 some value in the system, either modify it or learn some other value, then you can write F in the code of, of this F that, look, if the attacker wants to do that, he let him do that. If he wants to do that, he let him do that, but you don't let him do the both. So, so that's something that you can do. We'll see examples. Uh, so that's something that you can do. You can actually, you can do many other combinations like timing events as uh, uh, timing of events uh, and trade-offs. You can express very naturally uh, uh, within such a such a service. Um, and as we'll see, this also it's it's really amenable in a natural way to model analysis because, right? Yeah, because uh, my my system is going to be just as good for the external environment as this ideal system F. Then. Of course, later I can design this, the, the, other, the rest of the system assuming that I'm running F and later I replace it with my thing. That's kind of the thinking and that's how it's gonna work. Uh, and um, so, so, so that's good. And, uh, but uh, um, there's also trade-off, there are also uh, uh, drawbacks here. Um, 
is that uh, <coughs> so uh, the specification has to be detailed. And uh, this, the way you write f is really important. It's, and, and every little change in how you write f actually changes the specification. It changes what you require. And you have to be careful, and you have to know what you're doing. And you have to, there are kind of tricks that yeah, one has to, 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 to learn or to, kind of to see what this does. Uh, and it's important to, uh, to do it right. Uh, and sometimes you have to do things in a roundabout way. I mean, it's not really, you know, you want to, to get uh, 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 the effect of, uh, of uh, some information not leaked, so you just have to not uh, write it in the output. Or, or you want to, to, to guarantee that uh, things, there is some, uh, uh, you want to allow some leakage of information, so you want to write this process, this F, in a way that actually this F voluntarily gives this information to outside, to the adversary or something. Because that's how you model those things. But uh, again, we'll see that. Um, okay, so so let's try to again let's try to zoom in into how to specify uh, what it means to be to look like an ideal service. Um, so so here's the first attempt. Um, so uh, uh, I'm going to say that uh, uh, my system P realizes the ideal system F or the ideal service F if for all environments. So, so think, I'm not being specific here. Uh, think about some uh, uh, model of computation that you have in your mind for distributed system. And this environment is going to be uh, some combination of all the entities in the world uh, outside, uh, outside uh, the system. And uh, this uh, two bars is uh, kind of boarded from, uh, uh, from uh, think, uh, uh, CSP. That means that there are two processes running concurrently to each other, whatever that means in the model in your mind. Uh, and, and, and the idea would still look that, that uh, uh, you know, running the environment with, the, with, the, with, the, with my uh, protocol or my system is going to look, from the point of view of the environment, like running the environment with the, uh, with the ideal system. Okay, that's exactly what I was saying before. Uh, that's great. Um, and this really is essentially observation equivalence of, of Milner in, in this uh, CSP. This is what uh, uh, he defines. Um, but, uh, but, but, but this is not good enough for us because the correspondence is too tight because the environment actually sees everything, every output, every, every effect of, uh, of, uh, of this process P or the ID system F. And, uh, and uh, uh, we don't want to allow that because that's a too tight a correspondence. For instance, this thing is, is, is kind of equivalence relation, right? If, if, if uh, P... Uh, uh, realizes F, as then also F realizes P, but it's kind of like they're too much together, right? We want to be able to allow some slack. Uh, 